Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, today's the day. All counties in Washington state are set to move to phase three of reopening. We'll tell you what changes to expect. And waking up this Monday morning to some rain showers, more wind ahead as well. More details on that work week forecast is coming up. And happy Monday, everyone, and thanks so much for waking up with us. I'm Monica Petruzzelli, checking in with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls first thing this morning. And Kristen, some wind this weekend, certainly. Yes, you know, but we also had some sun. It was a little bit chilly as well. But uh, getting many people started early this morning, we are starting off with uh, some rain showers uh, to greet your Monday morning. So let's get you started first with that live look. Uh, this is from the uh, Legend Sky Cam Network there in downtown Yakima. And uh, we are looking at over Overall, just some breezy conditions as well in many parts. Uh, we will see again these rain chances again around the areas. We get you over to Skywatch radar. Uh, we have again rain showers mainly from the Columbia Basin into the foothills of the Blues. And we're also talking about some snow chances as well as we head up into the higher elevations. A winter weather advisory uh, is in place right now. So as we get you over to some of those wind speeds, we're looking at sustained winds right now. 21 in the Tri-Cities, uh, 17 in Walla Walla and pretty calm over into the Yakima Valley. Uh, in temperatures early this morning, we we're starting off in the 30s and 40s, mid 40s there in the Tri Cities and then 38 in Yakima. But as we take you throughout the day today, we should see those improvements to the wet weather at least turning partly sunny with a high of 58 degrees. But more wet weather, more wind ahead as well as we take you throughout your work week. I'll tell you when you can expect it. Your forecast, it's coming up. Thank you, Kristen. Today, Washington is moving to phase three of reopening. Restaurants, gyms, salons, and other retail and recreational spaces will be allowed to open at 50% capacity. And now up to 400 people can attend indoor and outdoor activities as long as physical distancing and masking are enforced. Plus, for professional sports, spectators will be allowed in the stands at 25% capacity so long as they wear masks and distance from others. And as the state transitions in into this phase three. The way that coronavirus metrics are evaluated will be changing as well. Individual counties will be monitored and required to meet criteria such as staying under a certain amount of cases and hospitalizations from week to week. The state's first evaluation based on the new criteria will take place on April 12th. If any county fails to meet one of the required metrics, it will be moved down one phase. And if the spread ramps up statewide and Washington's ICU capacity surpasses 90%, then all counties will move back into phase one of reopening and start over. Walla Walla VA enrolled veterans got their COVID vaccine at a drive through clinic this weekend in the Richland Federal Building's parking lot. Cap Cave U's Ellie Nakamoto White spoke with some of the veterans to find out how it went. Hundreds of veterans driving through this parking lot. Oh, I'm excited. Receiving their COVID-19 vaccine. I thought it went very well. I appreciate the fact that the VA set this up. Veterans enrolled with the Walla Walla Veterans Affairs, choosing either Johnson & Johnson or Moderna. The nice thing about the drive up is there's not a lot of lines that are inside buildings. People don't have to go in. It's, it increases convenience and ease of getting the shot. For Kennewick resident Joanne Hyen, the vaccine is a shot to freedom after being quarantined for a year. I've already talked to my doctor. She said two weeks after day today, I can go out more. First Sunday, I'm going to church while others are still careful but relieved. Yeah, I'd still be pretty cautious about it, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's, it, it's making me feel better, but I realize that this whole thing is not over. We need to remain vigilant. Officials say events like this give them a chance to reconnect with familiar faces while also helping to protect them. It's been easy, it's been enjoyable. We get to talk to our veterans. Um, many of them we see as patients. Some of them come from other other towns and cities that we get to talk to and get to know. Thanks to VA for giving me a shot. In Richland, Ellie Nakamoto White for Cap KVU Local News. Thank you, Ellie. And in Oregon, Governor Kate Brown is speeding up the state's COVID vaccine eligibility timeline. It's in order for more people at high risk to get their shots ahead of May 1st, which is when all adults will become eligible. Beginning today, counties in Oregon, which have largely completed vaccinating residents who are 65 or older, can begin vaccinating the next eligible group, including migrant and seasonal farm workers. Plus, beginning a week from today, March 29th, eligibility will 
expand statewide to include anyone over 45 with underlying health conditions, agricultural and food processing workers, people living in low-income senior housing, and the homeless. Students in Portland Public Schools will begin hybrid learning April 1st. This comes after both the teachers union and the school board finally ratified a deal to return to classrooms. The plan is to bring back the youngest students first preschool through first grade on April 1st with older students transitioning later in the month. The Portland School District is Oregon's largest with about 49,000 students. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention updated its social distancing guidelines for children in schools. On Friday, the country's health agency said children in elementary schools can now be just three feet apart. The previous recommendation of six feet of distancing was a major obstacle for schools. Masks and other preven prevention measures will stay in place. They indicated the same rules can apply to middle and high school students so long as community widespread is low. AstraZeneca has released results from its U.S. Phase 3 vaccine trial. The company says it's 79% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID-19 cases and 100% effective at preventing severe disease and hospitalization. The results paved the way for AstraZeneca to apply for an emergency use authorization from the FDA. The company says it will do so in the coming weeks. The vaccine is already approved in places like Europe, Canada, and Mexico. 506, let's take a quick break here in Good Morning Northwest. But before we do, let's take a live look outside this morning. And we're seeing some breezy conditions to start off the day today, along with some rain showers to start off your Monday. More details on how long it's expected to stick around. Your forecast is coming up. Plus, we have some good news if you're longing for a vacation after enduring a long year of COVID travel restrictions. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. For the 10th straight day, the TSA reports that more than 1 million people were screened at U.S. airports. The U.S. saw more than 1,300,000 passengers through airports nationwide on Saturday. And a new one-day pandemic record was reached Friday with more than 1,400,000 passengers. The surge comes as federal health officials still caution against travel. The Department of Transportation has a new campaign to remind travelers of mass requirements on all forms of transportation and in terminals. Royal Caribbean is marking its 2021 return with cruises from the Bahamas set to depart in June. They're available only to adults who have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and those under age 18 who have tested negative for the virus. All passengers on the seven night cruises must also meet the Bahamas COVID travel requirements, which could include taking additional tests before and after arrival. The cruise liner says more health and safety measures will be announced later on. Royal Caribbean sister lines, Celebrity Cruise is also getting on board with plans to set sail in June with fully vaccinated adult passengers and crew. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, spring break in Miami, Florida is seeing crowded beaches even after a curfew was put into effect. Welcome back everyone in news from across America. The city of Miami Beach continues to deal with unruly spring breakers, many of which are adults, not college students. Again yesterday, Miami Beach police began enforcing a curfew starting at 8 p.m. as part of an effort to fight the COVID pandemic. The emergency order will continue through March 30th as the city deals with unprecedented spring break crowds and the city manager will have the option to extend that curfew through April 13th if needed. 50 people were arrested Friday night and more than 1,000 have been arrested since the beginning of February. It feels like just any, any, uh, any match could set it off and we don't want to wait to uh, take uh, these kinds of actions in the wake of a, a tremendous tragedy. We want to we want to take it now when we've seen enough, and we have definitely seen enough. More than half of those arrested have been from out of state, many older than college age. Because Miami Beach is one of the few major destinations open, it has been a spring break like no other, according to the city manager. Will we have another COVID-19 surge here in the U.S.? That depends on which medical expert you ask. But as Britt Conway reports, COVID safety restrictions continue to ease and spring breakers continue to party. More partying in Miami, more travel, fewer restrictions. As medical experts warn, this pandemic is not over. I know that people see the light at the end of the tunnel, but they shouldn't confuse that uh, with being done.
According to data from Johns Hopkins University, in the past week, there was an average of about 55,000 new cases reported every day in the U.S. One of the big questions now, will we see a fourth surge? And that's where some medical experts are divided. One doctor is pointing to prior infections and vaccinations. We're talking about some form of protective immunity in about 55% of the population. So there's enough of a backstop here that I don't think you're going to see a fourth surge. I think what you could see is a plateauing for a period of time. It's that plateau that has another doctor worried. He's pointing to the past. History has shown us that when you have that plateauing, that's usually the forerunner of another surge. We've actually seen that in the European Union. And yet another medical expert says instead of predicting the future, he wants to prepare for it. We've got about 70% of seniors vaccinated now. We've got about a, a third of adults have had their first shot. Um, that still leaves a good bit to go though, so we're not there yet. The importance of getting people vaccinated is where all three experts agree. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Now, Cap gave you first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. 517 and happy Monday everybody. We have the winds that are with us early this morning and we're also looking to some rain chances that we have at least out the door this morning. Sunrise time just before 7 o'clock now at 655 and then we have a sunset at 712. So pretty quiet right now in the downtown Yakima area but we have some rain showers that we are dodging mainly from the Columbia Basin uh, into the foothills of the blue. So a closer look uh, again around the Tri-City. Just some light rain showers from Kennewick over into Richland currently dry right now over into Prosser. Most of the active weather right now from Walla Walla, Milton Freewater into Athena and even over into Umatilla this morning. You're dodging some rain showers if you're heading out and about. Higher elevations including the mountains looking at a winter weather advisory. It will be a little bit longer for the blues until later on this evening uh, that this winter weather advisory is in place but until 11 a.m. today for the eastern slopes and the Cascades. Uh, so there will be some travel restrictions. I'll show you that here coming up. Uh, what you can expect if you're going to be traveling through uh, some of the uh, mountain passes. So pretty active right now around the Pacific Northwest as this frontal system continues to make its way through. We still have right now chains which are required for both the eastbound and westbound lanes for Snoqualmie Pass. White Pass right now we have traction tires required. Stevens Pass even traction tires advised there. And then pretty quiet for Manastash just overall looking at that cloudy sky. So locally here we're going to slowly see those improvements as we take you throughout your afternoon. So lunchtime and even later Later on, we'll have a lot more sunshine, maybe a slight chance for a stray shower left over, but a lot more dry time and a lot more sun in the forecast for your Tuesday as these winds will start to lighten up. And our next system is set to move in here by Wednesday morning. We'll have a few more scattered rain showers out the door. The wind will also return to the area for your Wednesday. Uh, and that'll continue, I think, as we uh, head throughout your Wednesday afternoon. Now, speaking of winds early this morning, sustained winds. These are sustained up to about 21 in the Tri-City, 17 over over into Walla Walla, but pretty calm back over into the Yakima and the Kittitas Valley uh, right now. We even have some wind gusts, at least in the Tri-Cities, very close to about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Temperatures right now, 39 in Walla Walla, mid-40s there in the Tri-Cities with some upper 30s over into Yakima and some pretty high tree pollen for today. Juniper, alder, poplar, those would be the main tree pollens for your Monday. So highs out there for this afternoon, 54 for Toppenish into Yakima. We should be close to the upper 50s there in the Tri-Cities. 55 in Hermiston with 54 in Connell. Dayton today at 47 and then 54 for Walla Walla. So overnight tonight clearing things out. It's going to be breezy a little bit early but down to about 28 in Yakima and then right at that freezing mark for the Tri-Cities and also for Walla Walla. So there's your seven-day forecast. That next rain chance on Wednesday and then back to plenty of sunshine. Beautiful weekend ahead. 67 uh, there on Saturday close to 70 degrees on Sunday and then that seven-day forecast for Yakima. Should be pretty nice over the next couple of days for you. Your next rain chance arriving on on Wednesday along with some wind and a high of 56. Thank you, Kristen. 520, we're going to take a quick break here in Good Morning Northwest. But coming up, the United States is passing another milestone in vaccinations. We'll tell you where we're at.
Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. The founder and CEO of Texas Roadhouse, Kent Taylor, has died. A family statement says Taylor, who was suffering from COVID-19 related symptoms, took his own life. Taylor's family says he came up with the idea that eventually became Texas Roadhouse on a cocktail napkin. In addition to creating the International Eatery, Taylor also financially backed a clinical study that aided military members who suffered hearing problems. Texas Roadhouse made its debut in 1993 and now has more than 600 locations in 49 states. Taylor was 65 years old. About 124 million doses of the COVID vaccine have been administered in the U.S. That's according to the CDC as of Sunday. And that's more than 3 million doses since Saturday for a seven-day average of 2.4 million doses per day. President Biden promised 100 million vaccinations by his 100th day in office. And that goal was met on March 19th, his 59th day. 44 million Americans have been fully vaccinated now, with 81 million having received at least one dose based on the current rate, it's estimated that half of the U.S. population would be at least partially vaccinated by around mid-May, and that would mean nearly all Americans could be vaccinated by late July as long as supplies hold up. And check this out at 525. From Brooklyn to White House Chief Medical Advisor, yep, that's a cartoon of Dr. Anthony Fauci on the front of a children's book all about him. It's called Dr. Fauci, How a Boy from Brooklyn Became America's Doctor, written by Kate Messner. She says the book is for curious kids just like Fauci who always had questions, whether being about the tropical fish in his bedroom or something he learned in Sunday school. The book comes out June 29th. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Starting off with your close to home forecast today as we're dodging some rain showers out the door. Also, those winds have returned early this morning. Some of the wind gusts, especially this morning at the 30 miles per hour. 55 today for Pasco and to Kennewick. 54 today for Basin City, Burbank or I should say up to Connell, 54 degrees. We're going to see those rain chances, especially there along the foothills of the blue, so make sure to grab that umbrella. 51 today for Milton Freewater, 54 down into Boardman, Hepner today at 47. Uh, but as that front has uh, it's already slid off to the east, we're back to a mostly sunny sky there from Zilla into Wapato. Still a little bit breezy for you, but up to 52 for Sela. Natchez up to about 49. Might have a stray shower or two left over there up in Kittitas County. We're going to be up to about 41 for Clee Allen, 46 degrees in Ellensburg, and then 53 today for Vantage. And check this out at 554. If your favorite part of the day is a glass of wine after work, what if having a glass of wine was your work? A winery in Sonoma, California is offering a job to someone with a passion for wine. The Murphy Good Winery is offering free rent and $10,000 a month uh -huh. for the one year position. If you don't know winemaking, no worries. It comes with on the job training and even 30 cases of wine. The family owned business first launched the position in 2009 and thought it was about time to uncork it again. Applicants should send a video resume explaining why this would be their dream job. And the winemakers are also interested in your social media following, particularly on Instagram. So you can learn more about that at murphygoodwinery.com. See, and that's the thing, Instagram mm -hmm. following. So I would assume if you have a high following mm -hmm. that you could be a good applicant for this position. I think some people could here could be excellent applicants with all our wine knowledge. <laughs> Possibly. We'll see. All right, coming up on Good Morning Northwest to the Gonzaga Bulldogs made their long-awaited NCAA tournament debut over the weekend. We'll show you how they did. Plus, more members of the Proud Boys are under federal investigation in connection to the U.S. Capitol riot. Good Morning Northwest continues right now. From Cap KPU Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning, Northwest, and happy Monday, and thanks for starting your work week with us. I'm Monica Petrozelli. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. Kristen, a wet start to our work week? It is, so you will want to grab the umbrella in some locations this morning. The winds have also picked up this morning as well. Uh, so let's get you started first that live look from the Legend Sky Cam Network there in downtown Yakima. And that's actually where we have some quiet conditions early this morning. You're dealing with some very light winds and a clear sky. So already clearing out behind this front, but we have a lot of wet weather, though, uh, from the 
the Tri-Cities into the foothills of the blue. So that's where you're going to have to deal with some soggy weather early on, some mountain snow showers as well that we're talking about uh, to begin your Monday. So even those winds have been picking up, up to about 21 currently in the Tri-Cities, 14 for Walla Walla, and then pretty calm there over into Yakima. But our current temperatures right now, uh, we're starting off in the Tri-Cities at 45, 34 in Ellensburg, 38 in Walla Walla, and those upper 30s as well for Yakima. So there's your forecast for today. We'll have a little bit of some sunshine peeking out this afternoon, drier conditions with a high of about 58 degrees. We have another rain chance though ahead to track more wind as well. I'll have that full forecast. Monica, it's coming up. A federal grand jury has indicted four proud boys for conspiracy and other charges related to their alleged roles in the January 6 assaults on the Capitol. Federal prosecutors now say those leaders of the far right pro Trump group were working together to launch a sophisticated attack. Criminal cases had already been filed against proud boy leaders Ethan Nordine of Seattle and Joseph Biggs of Florida. But this latest indictment charges two other group leaders, along with Nordine and Biggs, Zachary Rell of Philadelphia and Charles Donahoe of North Carolina. The significance of the grand jury is the prosecutors are now moving from what the individuals were doing that you see on tape to actually who the event planners were. Who are the masterminds of this? What were specifically they intending to do? How were they communicating with each other? The new conspiracy indictment alleges that Rel, Donahoe, Nordine, and Biggs worked together to prepare paramilitary and high-tech communications equipment to raise money and encourage other Proud Boys members to come to Washington, D.C. on January 6. None of these defendants have yet entered their plea with these latest arrests. Prosecutors have now brought charges against about 20 people affiliated with the Proud Boys. Over the weekend, hundreds of people in Portland stood in solidarity with those across the country to honor those killed in the Atlanta spa shootings. Rallies were held in several cities across the U.S. Those at the event in Portland say the shootings are only one of the more recent incidents. They say hate and violence towards the Asian community has been on the rise over the last year. Usually when people are, you know, think about Asian, we're like, a, you know, we try to be quiet, be gentle and be nice and be polite, um, you know respect to each other but when other people you know treat us badly we we just got to stand up and speak the up attendees hope by showing up and standing together with other minority groups the hate against them will stop the 21 year old suspect in last week's shootings is in custody facing eight murder charges well, rumors have circulated that the Tri-Cities uh, is getting a Trader's, Trader Joe's location in Pasco. But Cap Cave, you reached out to Trader Joe's spokesperson and we got an answer directly. The grocery chain's PR director, Kenya friend Daniel, told us there are no confirmed plans to bring a Trader Joe's store to the area, including Pasco. It was rumored that team members from Trader Joe's locations in Spokane heard the Tri-Cities were the next Washington region to, oper, to open a location. It's not all bad news. They did confirm the chain has expressed interest in expanding to the Tri-Cities and has even gone as far as to look at locations in the area. This brings us to our poll question of the day. Would you like to see a Trader Joe's grocery store in the Tri-Cities? Vote now at yaktrinews.com slash vote and we'll share those results at the end of the show. Orders for applets and cutlets have been rolling in since Liberty Orchards Company announced it would be closing for good this summer. The company has been so overwhelmed with the demand for its products that they will not be taking orders for several days to give them enough time to catch up. Owners say they're grateful for the community support and loyal customers who have stood by them over the years. The Pacific Northwest-based company is still hoping to find a buyer for their business, one who would be willing to keep the operation based in Kashmir. Now, the Gonzaga Bulldogs at the NC2A Basketball Tournament. Brought to you by Toyota. Save big all March during Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event. Toyota, let's go places. The Gonzaga Bulldogs had to wait a while for their first game of the NCAA tournament. In fact, Coach Mark Few said it's the longest they had to wait to start the tournament, as they were one of the last teams to tip off. But they took no time to take care of Norfolk State, as Gonzaga jumped out to a 20-point lead at the half and extended it up to almost 50 in the second half. The lead was so big that the Zags got to rest all their starters for the final seven minutes of the game. Coach Few admitted there was a little anxiety. It was such a long layoff for his team, but it was put to bed pretty quick. And he was very happy with how his team answered the call. And the guys came out with a great approach. 
Played great defense all night and, and did a good job. Uh, and, man, I, I was impressed with how hard uh, Norfolk played, and they run a lot of stuff, and they switch defenses, so there's a lot of adjusting going on out there uh, uh, by our guys. But uh, uh, by and large, very, very pleased uh, for getting step one here. The Zags have a tougher matchup ahead today in eighth-seeded Oklahoma. During the first half of the season, Oklahoma ranked in the top ten. Today's game will tip off this morning at 1140. Gonzaga has five more wins to go to get that undefeated national championship. 604, let's take a quick break here on Good Morning Northwest. But first, let's take that live look outside. And we're looking at an active start to the work week. Some rain showers at the lower elevations, even some mountain snow coming down right now. We'll have more details on that work week forecast. It's coming up. Welcome back in news from across America. The city of Miami Beach continues to deal with unruly spring breakers, many of which are adults, not college students. Again, yesterday, Miami Beach police began enforcing a curfew starting at 8 p.m. as part of an effort to fight the COVID pandemic. The emergency order will continue through March 30th as the city deals with unprecedented spring break crowds and the city manager will have the option to extend that curfew through April 13th if needed. 50 people were arrested Friday night and more than a thousand have been arrested since the beginning of February. It feels like just any any uh, any match could set it off and we don't want to wait to uh, take uh, these kinds of actions in the wake of a, a tremendous tragedy. We want to we want to take it now when we've seen enough and we have definitely seen enough. More than half of those arrested have been from out of state, many older than college age. Because Miami Beach is one of the few major destinations open, it has been a spring break like no other, according to the city manager. Will we have another COVID-19 surge here in the United States? That depends on which medical expert you ask. But as Britt Conway reports, COVID safety restrictions continue to ease and spring breakers continue to party. More partying in Miami, more travel, fewer restrictions. As medical experts warn, this pandemic is not over. I know that people see the light at the end of the tunnel, but they shouldn't confuse that uh, with being done. According to data from Johns Hopkins University, in the past week, there was an average of about 55,000 new cases reported every day in the U.S. One of the big questions now, will we see a fourth surge? And that's where some medical experts are divided. One doctor is pointing to prior infections and vaccinations. We're talking about some form of protective immunity in about 55% of the population. So there's enough of a backstop here that I don't think you're going to see a fourth surge. I think what you could see is a plateauing for a period of time. It's that plateau that has another doctor worried. He's pointing to the past. History has shown us that when you have that plateauing, that's usually the forerunner of another surge. We've actually seen that in the European Union. And yet another medical expert says instead of predicting the future, he wants to prepare for it. We've got about 70% of seniors vaccinated now. We've got about a, a third of adults have had their first shot. Um, that still leaves a good bit to go, though, so we're not there yet. The importance of getting people vaccinated is where all three experts agree. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And the Biden administration has closed the border between the U.S. and Mexico. The decision comes as a major surge of migrants are straining resources under due to the COVID-19 pandemic. U.S. Customs and Border Protection detained nearly 9,300 unaccompanied children last month, almost doubling January's total. The Department of Homeland Security expects the number of migrants at the border will soon hit a peak not seen in at least two decades. While the situation at the border is in flux, some progress is being made on the DREAM Act legislation, which would provide a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants who are brought to the U.S. as children. Small businesses in border towns across the U.S. are reeling from the economic fallout of the partial border closures. Restrictions on non-essential travel were put in place a year ago to curb the spread of the virus and have been extended every month since. Small businesses, residents, and local chambers of commerce say the financial toll has been steep, as have the disruptions to life in communities where it's common to shop, work, and sleep in two different countries. Now, CAP gave you first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls.
And happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you had a nice weekend. We had spring, which officially arrived on Saturday. Although over the weekend, it was a little bit cooler. Numbers back into the 50s and a little bit breezy as well. We're carrying over those winds into early this morning. The rain showers are coming down for some locations, although it is a dry start currently uh, in the downtown Yakima area. You're expecting a lot more sunshine for you as the sun will be coming up today at about 655. So radar and satellite, Skywatch radar this morning showing you some of the rainfall uh, from portions of the Tri-Cities extending into the foothills, the blues, a lot of mountain snow out there as well. Closer look here in the Tri-Cities, a lot of these showers now just pushing east of Kennewick into Richland. So you're starting to see uh, some of those improvements early this morning. But the bulk of the wet weather here further to our south and southeast, Pendleton, Athena up into Milton free water in Walla Walla. It is a soggy start for your morning commute. There will be those improvements out there today. The second half of the day we're going to be drying out. But if you are traveling, just a heads up, we have some snow that is expected uh, up into the higher elevations between two to 3,000 feet. There's a winter weather advisory. That'll go until 11 a.m. today uh, for the Cascades and Eastern Slopes, but extending a little bit longer here for the Northern Blues until 8 p.m. tonight. Where they're expecting an additional three to eight inches of snowfall with this system. So you can see all the active weather that we have around the Pacific Northwest early, early this morning. Even a little bit of some snow flying there up towards the Spokane area uh, this morning. An update to those past conditions. We have Snoqualmie Pass, which we've seen improvements. We had chains required now down to traction tires advised. Required there for White Pass and then the snow is also coming down for Stevens Pass where we have some traction tires advised. So a closer look here. As I mentioned, we will be seeing those improvements for the second half of the day. The rain moves out. Might have a slight chance for a stray shower, but a lot more sun is back in the forecast and still going to be breezy out there for today. Winds will die down Tuesday. Beautiful day with a mostly sunny sky. And that next system is on tap for your Wednesday. So Wednesday morning uh, could see some scattered rain showers and that will continue for us as we head throughout your Wednesday afternoon, especially here uh, along the foothills, the blues. And it is going to be a bit of a breezy day as well once again. Uh, so speaking of winds this morning, sustained up to 22 in the Tri-Cities. Uh, just check the last wind gusts in the Tri-Cities, close to 30 right now. So again, those winds today will be between 20 to 30, but pretty calm at least right now over into the Yakima Valley. Starting off with numbers this morning in the uh, 30s and 40s, 45 currently in the Tri-Cities and then 34 over into Yakima. And some pretty high tree pollen for today, Juniper, Alder, Poplar. Those would be the main pollens for uh, your Monday. So your forecast for this afternoon, 43 in Cleelum with 54 degrees in Yakima. Upper 50s there from Tri-Cities into Hermiston and Prosser. And then 54 today for Walla Walla. 52 overnight or today in Pendleton. Now overnight tonight, we're gonna clear out Breezy early, but it's going to be a chilly night, upper 20s and low 30s. So there's your seven-day forecast. Rain chance Wednesday at 59, and then really looking at a lot of sun, warmer temperatures. Beautiful weekend, 67 Saturday, 70 degrees on Sunday. And then in Yakima, your next rain chance as well on Wednesday at 56 before clearing out up to 62 on Friday.